If you can talk, you can sing. If you can walk, you can dance. If you can talk, you can sing. If you can walk, you, you can, can dance. dance. If you can talk, you can sing. If you can walk, you can dance. If you can talk, you can sing. If you can walk, you can dance. Uh, my name is Adrian Alberto Molina, also known as Molina Speaks. We're going to do something a little bit different. Thank y'all for the space. Thank you for the time. A uh, couple of uh, precursors. Uh, if you hear a baby uh, crying or speaking, it's mine and my partner's. Uh, don't be alarmed. It's just a baby. Um, and I know the world right now is not very fond of children, but we are very happy to be in the space with a baby girl. And hope you are too. So uh, if you hear some cries, you know, celebrate them with us. From Black Elk Speaks. But if the vision was true and mighty, as I know it is true and mighty yet, for such things are of the spirit. And it is in the darkness of their eyes that men get lost. So I know that it is a good thing I am going to do. And because no good thing can be done by any man alone, I will first make an offering and send a voice to the spirit of the world, that it may help me to be true. See, I fill this sacred pipe with the bark of the red willow, but before we smoke it, you must see how it is made and what it means. These four ribbons hanging here on the stem are the four quarters of the universe. The black one is for the west, where the thunder beings live to send us rain. The white one for the north, Whence comes the great white cleansing wind, the red one from the east, whence the springs, the light where the morning star lives to give men wisdom, the yellow for the south, whence come the summer and the power to grow. But these four spirits are only one spirit after all, and this eagle feather here is for that one which is like a father, and also it is for the thoughts of men that should rise high as eagles do. Is not the sky a father and the earth a mother? Are not all living things with feet or wings or roots their children? All right, I welcome some friends because we know that sometimes it's lonely here in the literary world. It's lonely to be an artist. It's lonely on planet Earth sometimes. So I welcome my friends up. Uh, Miss Cherie, love Mestiza Brown. Thank you. Michelle Gabriel Lock Parish. Ramon Gabriel Lock Parish. And we will be presenting to you all the spice tray in poetic form. North. We begin with the east. young folks do it when they read off of their phones. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Spices arrive from the east, smoked or steamed, neatly wrapped in ruined flowers. Out on the dunes, silver is scent and skin, answering with a scream upon stained pages. Whip shadow of a dark-haired girl, dancing in her own mist. Out of the spell of his story, 
which does repeat permutation, golden age coming from a direction no one's looking, facing rear view to the forward till it fades out edges, surround and eclipse your view. The sun changed too from greater command, stirring a chime within the land, time to release superhuman power upon the earth. <coughs> Thus began a colossal battle of wills, egos to, to realize every wish, but blind to the greater spell. What's order once, now creates hells. Most look to the competitor's eyes, so the full harvest hung unrealized. But slow spins the star to shine, a gentle and steady magnetics. Lives led his fingers to do the weaving. Designs delivered inside. Soul swim and equinox sway, so that tomorrow can't be foretold by the facts of today. The laws of night can't predict the shapes of day. The gold rushes have shaped this west. Fires now threaten to dislodge old mining tailings. Mining spills threaten the rivers. Children still get trapped in old forgotten mines while hiking. Californians kill the Indian dead laws, protected their year with a gold rush. People crazy enough to leave everything for the possibility of a sprinkle of the good stuff. As a Colombiana, I know something about that beautiful, uncorruptible, soft, glowing metal. As a Central Asian, Syrian, and Jewish granddaughter, I do too. Gold. In the US, we all have at least just a little bit. Computers and smarts all sprinkled with it. It's worth we know how much an ounce, but I do know an ounce will fit in your palm. Fit around your finger. Dangle off your ears just right. When the economy wobbles, people still head for the hills, leave their corporate stocks behind, and their worth gets back with gold, AU, oro. But they wouldn't be crazy to buy up some sacred saffron either, the $10,000 spice it's been called. It's good to know some food, some sustenance, still rival the worth of some of the Earth's most precious metals. And what am I saying they always have? The spice trade. An epic as much as a description of it. A geographical moment that shifted mountains or humanity. You could say people went crazy for the stuff, but they still do. We're just used to that now. Used to giant blocks of trade with strangers. Trade routes backed with guns. Fascinations with the foods of faraway lands that everyone here simply must try. Green curry, Thai, pho. Vietnamese, falafel, pizza, tacos. You don't need to know much more than the exotified version of the peoples and places that brought them to us or worry about how. The spice trade. When Europeans got their hands on cinnamon, they were sure they had gotten proof of paradise, of God's original garden, that parts of heaven had shattered to become shards. What else could cinnamon be but proof of paradise still in this world, heaven left behind and edible. Far away, like far away lands were strange mythical creatures, the Arabs told them, guarded the treasure. Only the bra bravest could fetch it, but that wasn't enough. Only the cunning know-how of generations and cinnamon warriors could get past the flying, venom-spit breath snakes and vipers that guarded closely. And despite the calculated myths that the Easterners kept feeding Europe, so crazed and greedy for its spices, we all know that the trade tucked science, art, religion, and mathematicals into its baskets, 
filled with cinnamon, ginger, and other secrets. Notes on culture, on trade, currencies. As cultures collided, getting busy, trading silver, spices, gold, silk for each other, they helped evolve culture. They shaped together what the world looks like and tastes like right now. The wealthiest among us have savored saffron, fresh basils and mints, chives and rosemary, cardamom, coriander, anise, allspice. We've savored it in teas, soups, and rices from the world's best chefs. We shampoo with them. But even the most middle class among us has these faraway spices and pantry. Even the poorest among us are wealthy in salt and pepper. Unfortunately, as you travel down our economic food chain, you find more and more of these spices substituted with red dye, sodium bisulfate, monosodium glutamate, dyes, and other small doses of artificial toxins. No paprika or turmeric bright or sweet enough to cover up the poorness of foods not coming from the spice trade. Young Trayvon Martin was killed on his quest for Yellow Six Lake, Red Forty Lake, Yellow Five Lake, Blue Two Lake, Yellow five, red 40, yellow six, blue number one, Skittles. Sweet, right? But also far from the splinters of paradise. Not quite fit for the lore of yore except in their rainbow brightness. Spices, they said in Europe, was not just what the mystical ancient Egyptians used to embalm the dead, but also what the phoenix had to gather in order to be able to rise again. Its nest, actually a collection of carefully gathered spices, cinnamon, frankincense, ginger, mustard seed, myrrh, pepper, and even the famed malabathrum, the leaf of the cinnamon plant, a pound at the time was worth six times the average Roman monthly salary. Sacred mysteries helped the phoenix burn just right in a pyre. It probably smelled like perfection to any gods or rich men. It would signal a time to rise again, I wish I'd heard all about all of that before, even as a granddaughter of Samarkand, Bukhara, Uzbekistan on the Silk Route. I don't know or don't remember. Like the phoenix, I forget and remember again and again in this strange land of the West. I wish I had known on time that we could have wrapped precious Trayvon in proper linens and spice gems, wrapped him or nestled him like a proper phoenix, just in case, just to see, watch his little boy's spirit rise again, Grant us wisdom and healing from his sacred sweet tears. One drop cures all ills. Maybe a river of it could cleanse this West, the cacophony of ills that I don't need to remind you about. We could have at least buried him like a proper pharaoh with a peppercorn in each nostril. Wait, this is an homage to the spice trade, an epic more than just a description of it, an era that have moved languages, artistic styles, beliefs about the sacred, creative translators, map makers, adventurers, myth weavers, a flourishing of us, border crossers, bridge builders, poet bringers, us. Here we are today, tasting the senses of heaven, swimming in the grand convergence of peoples and cultures, strangers to each other, but shaping the world, mistrusting each other, but needing one another so great greatly. We must suspend our fears. And I give praise to our fair board bearers trading the goods of the world and changing the peoples of it. I pay homage to those cultivating domestically and fighting off vipers, those who don't get center stage in our story but toiled away brilliantly to make it so. May we keep getting what's real of the earth. May we keep having words, myths, architectural ways to exchange. May we return to chart the stars to for each other. May we thank them for little sprinkles of fertility they shower down on us as we sleep, dreaming of times and future ones, imbibing our insides, activating the phoenix nests in our bellies, reviving that which should be revived in an era of great spice, great silk, silver, gold, saffron, wealth. We give thanks. We give thanks that history is a poem and everything we need is right here to keep it going.
Um, I'm representing the energy of the South. Traditionally, the South has a lot to do with play and fun and spirit and um, a youthfulness, even, in many traditions. Um, but the South, in many traditions, is also representative of fire. And um, fire has the potential to encompass anger and destruction, even. Um, so I'm going to begin with um, a poem indicative of some of those feelings in, in, in hopes that those feelings can be transformed into the growth and the power of growth that summer holds, which is also uh, representative of the self. This is titled, You the Human. They don't care about your life, my seeds. They are coming for your heads, my seeds. They want to take your lives, my seeds. They want to control your hearts, my seeds. If you are less than human, then it all makes sense, my seeds. If you are a lesser being, everything is justified. Someone profits off of our demise. Underhanded blueprints wear no disguise. Existence is currency of the highest exchange. Where is our wealth? Hidden in the depths of blood, the more our blood spills, our secrets sprawl out onto concrete pages documenting sacred ink, hard pressed. Mothers wail, they know, our precious knowledge lays before our eyes, blood rituals. Mothers know these blood rituals best. We bore them first, you, into existence. We bore them first, performing ritual, binding, flawlessly, flawed pain mortally. System antics induce insanity, off balance, keys. What key are we in? Most of us ain't even singing the same song. I love myself, said the revolution. We are in the days where self-love is radical politics, radical, adjective, of or going to the root or origin, fundamental, return to root. Perhaps we have always been in these times. Nothing holds weight but physics, no trust where there is tryst, politics, stoner campaigns, lover's lane, capital dances with lives, especially posthumously. Bottom lines, dotted lines, coke lines, food bank lines, time, cash in. They make you feel crazy, you, the human, supposed to, swallowing your sanity only to sell it back to you, living marginally, reiterated, you don't belong. You damn right I don't belong. I'm taking my babies and I'm moving on. Asada taught me. Okay. Speak for the North. Feel free to get a, a whiff of the great energizer of the North. <coughs> A poem for my son. Mi hijo, speak no Spanglish, because daddy's Spanish is not fluent. Si, entiendo mucho. Better the words do not always come out the same way they come in. Me entiendes? Me who speak no Spanglish, but he can count to ten like uno, dos, tres, cuatro, cinco, seis, siete, ocho, nueve, diez. It's more like uno, dos, tre tres, cuarto. Mijito tries hard. And his abuelo smiles approvingly. He is working towards a hundred now, cien. He responds lovingly to mijo and can pronounce his middle name, Ulberto, not Umberto or Roberto, or any other form of Beto, pero Ulberto, my middle name, my father's name, passed down to the son. Three generations of legacy, but mi hijo speak no Spanglish, because admittedly, daddy hasn't spent much time teaching him Spanish. Maybe because abuelo never taught daddy Rarimuri or Nahuatl because his mother did not speak it to him, because things were changing then. 
Miho, you come from many cultures, many a lyric. Know that these roots run deep into the land of spirits. Chihuahua, Mexico, El Valle de San Luis, Colorado, influence de España, pero primero y siempre indígena. Mi bisabuela was a curandera. Tara Umar, wise woman, a healer. This is your history, mijo. We come from a long line of campesinos. Tu bisabuelo came to los Estados Unidos as a bracero. He listened to Cesar speak in the fields. Huelga. Tu abuelo y sus hermanos picked oranges and avocados under the prickling sun of the Southwest. Once Mexico, before that, simply Mama Tierra, now Aslan. Hard work, mijo. We made it in the land of slavery, America. Y tu abuela, de Rollins, Wyoming, always struggling against the racist history of the frontier. Tu papi, human first, pero chicano, artista, activista, representa, pero me who speak no Spanglish because progress has stolen a piece of history from all of us. Papi, mijo, my people, if someone does not break this cycle with or without a mic, <laughs> will there be any trace of us left? Me who speak no Spanglish. Song for my daughter. Baby love as long as the sky is. Baby love as long as the sky is blue. For you, it's okay. Yeah, it's true. Hey. Baby love as long as the night is. Baby love as long as the night is black. For the stars, for your lot, you're not lost. No. Baby love as long as the dirt is. Baby love as long as the dirt is brown. For you, for your seeds, for your roots. Hey, baby love as long as the earth is. Baby love as long as the earth is green. For your eyes, for your inside, yo, it's alright, yeah. Can we hear from the East again? Another, another, this thing working? Yes. Okay. Um, another poem about children. Um, this poem's called Letter to My Children, two of which is right here. Um, This morning, with one leg in my dreams, I heard the radio announcers say that more than half the children accounted for in the census were declared multiracial or ethnic. My wife and I have a child coming. Our faces and flesh, eyes and hair are noticeably different, different grains of humanity. Our tribe started out like any other in the spring as transgressors and twisters, as thieves of old ways. Compared to generations past, we considered ourselves gentle, nonviolent. Maybe I'm just saying that because the moment hadn't arrived. Revolution, struggle, war. We don't want war. Our people follow the ways of beauty and translate the mysteries of the world's soul. Still the paradox of all temples being built of blood and designed by serpents. We were used to long distances separating us. Our machines linked us on those occasions, though they lacked love's full magnetism. There were thousands of empty habitations where two souls could mingle bodies. Children were conceived with strong passion and no regard. Mixed blends and seasonings of the globe's refugees. Gypsies filled the slow disintegration of the old order. 
brittle in its winter. Iron, microchips, crystals, which we would use in new old grids of geomancy. We had a respectful disregard for traditions and had to appeal to our family's remembrance of their own youth as each generation moved faster, trying to surmount the last. Nations and tongues blended in the aftermath of wars. Miscommunication was rampant between the young and the old. Entire landscapes vanished. Ecosystems were transferred to mythology. Our fathers, the destroyers from every era, tried to record everything. To build a world of tombstones, an afterlife in the present filled with their own monuments. Treasures of all nations were laid cheaply at our feet. Silks, statues, music, spices. We had something of the idol worshippers in us, loving the rare and fantastic like the Israelites and the golden calf. Energy swam and ripped through everything. Bright clothes, electric music, banners, billboards, guns, explosions, social volcanism. I hope my children are more confident than me. Look back less and with more understanding, are less shaken by the words of the ruins and more stirred and attracted to their soul's visions and intuitions. Solidify the mind's holograms, institutions of my ascendance. Accept the remains of all tribes, fusing and recombining elements. On your path, glide past the old churches in search of fresh revelation. Let their halls blend with the dust of your feet. Ramon Parrish, Galactic Historian on Future History of Cosmic Grace. We are about out of time. You have a short one, Ms. Brown? Okay. Would you like to come up and give us some closing words? from the South, which is so often left out of our discourse. This is called Dreaming in Rhythm. I dream of sweetness returning, pools of honey to dip in, sticky, sweet, cleanse sacred geometric honeycombs. My babies <coughs> smile and dip their fingers in goodness, laughing at daddy's silliness. Their faces reflect everything I've ever loved, everything I've ever died for. Blood ties, us, we share the same everything. Dreams of living unapologetically. I love who I love and we are everything together. Powerful because we love fearlessly. I am because we are. We rise and fall gracefully through portals coming and going, in and out of consciousness. We stay woke through the spokes of time's wheel. Love spills from every pore. We sweat out our love and offer our sweaty palms to the universe in the name of service. We are divine shapes that play out the lyrical mathematics of the cosmos, carefully orchestrated to accentuate the chaos of the structured measures. So much music, rhythmic time. We play our instruments, trying to stay in tune, focusing on the invisible conductor's hands in our subconscious periphery. Am I on beat? One day it'll just flow, we tell ourselves. Feel the music, flow. Improvis improvisation is full of structure universal patterns, indestructible, yet we are composers, contributors to the greatest symphony to have ever lived. I dream that one day someone will hear my song and hum into the chorus of the next generation. I write this music with my dreams, blood, and stardust. Thank you all very much for being part of the Spice Trade. This is one of many births of a new concept called SKP, Some Kind of Paradise, and this is an effort to get more voices, underrepresented voices, important voices into our media, our literature, and to be heard over the great amphitheaters, microphones, speakers of the world. Can you give us one word to close for the West?
tone. If you can talk, you can sing. If you can walk, you can dance. If you can talk, you can sing. If you can walk, you can dance. Thank you.